With 19 museums and more than 137 million objects, the Smithsonian is often referred to as the nation's attic. But the Smithsonian is far more than a repository for the country's artifacts. Today it serves as both a research institution and an interactive classroom around the globe. Up next on Campus Conversations, we'll talk about a truly unique partnership between Montgomery College faculty and the Smithsonian's own educators, researchers, and curators. Welcome to Campus Conversations. I'm Marcus Rosano. And I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. Just a few miles down the road on the National Mall, you can find everything from George Washington's uniform to Dorothy's ruby slippers. But look just behind the exhibits and you might see Montgomery College faculty as they engage in intensive research, discussion, and lesson planning through a joint program of the Paul Peck Humanities Institute and the Smithsonian. With us to talk about Montgomery College's Smithsonian Faculty Fellows Program is Amanda Truitt, the coordinator for the 2009 program, and Manjula Kumar, the program manager at the Smithsonian Institution. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. First off, let's talk about the partnership between the Smithsonian and Montgomery College and the fellowship program and how that all came about. Um, okay, I'll start from the point of view of the Smithsonian. Uh, as you know, the mission of the institution is the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Used to be among men, and we just leave out the among <laughs> men. Um, and this particular partnership is one of the one of the most important educational outreach efforts to bridge that increase and certainly the diffusion of knowledge for the faculty members from Montgomery college and the outreach you know we may have 14 or 15 fellows per year but the impact is much larger through the fellows to the students and even beyond to the student families i hope professor truitt from the perspective of a montgomery college fellow and now as the coordinator of the program what does it bring to the montgomery college community Oh, it's an invaluable resource. I was so pleased to have finally become a part of this. You see, it's growing in size. It's uh, somewhat competitive, and it's an honor to be chosen as one of the fellows. Academically, it's important because it's an opportunity to mix disciplines, not just with the advantage of being within close proximity of such a resource as this, but we get to involve our students in such a way that we're taking what, through the Paul Peck Humanities Institute, what is traditionally considered like a humanities umbrella, and we're pulling all of the other disciplines in by reaching all of these various faculty and allowing them to participate. This offer, offers an opportunity for us to really diffuse that knowledge in the, in the finest sense of the objective of this program, this particular topic, into the students who are from all over the world with every kind of major or discipline that they're seeking out and really offering the opportunity to allow them to mix with those from other disciplines and create new ideas to move forward in every way that they can create. It's really an instrument of creativity. Wow. Um, tell us a little bit about what's available at the Smithsonian. How many museums are there? We talked a little bit about the number of objects that uh, make this such a great institution. Mm -hmm. As uh, you said in the opening, the Smithsonian comprises of 19 museums, nine research centers, and uh, 137 million objects. Not even a small portion of that is on view for the public at a given time. And so I think a special aspect of this fellowship is, and I think what it, the fellows enjoy, is the opportunity to go behind scenes. Mm. And every time we are planning, I hear this, can we go behind scenes <laughs> and look at objects that may never have been on display, that are under um, study by a curator? A lot of research has to go into 
an object before it can be put on display. And when you say behind the scenes, you mean actually going into maybe a laboratory? Absolutely. Um, behind oh, the actual... Into the archives. I have to tell you an experience right. that I had there. It was not with the fellows, but it was one of the things that made me want to become a fellow, <laughs> was when I visited the museum, when I first arrived in Washington, D.C., I guess it was about 10 years ago now, um, I visited the Smithsonian with a friend of mine who knew one of the curators in, in the Natural History Museum, and she says, I have a treat for you. <laughs> I said, ooh, what, what? And she says, come with me. We're going to go down into the bowels of the Smithsonian, and it was like being in like a museum, like the archive of these you know dark halls and all of these treasures <laughs> that are there. And she says, I want to show you this. And they brought us over to a, it looked like a great big metal coffin and they said, okay, okay, we're gonna take the top off of this thing, and they picked up this top, cop, the top from this thing, and I looked in there, and it was a coelocanth. Now, what's that? Yes, That's what is that? It's that, <laughs> it's for that it's, it is an ancient fish that lives on the very bottom of the sea. It's very, very rare. They've only recently discovered this thing. They can't bring one up alive because its habitat, the niche that it has evolved or not, because it's been there now for, you know, it timelessly been there. And it has to stay in this environment because it's adapted to the, to the cold and the pressure and the dark. But they had this one that was preserved in the tank and I got to touch it. I got to <laughs> run my hand from its toothy grin all the way along its body, almost right to its tail. And I thought, uh, now here's something that just nobody gets to do. Mm -hmm. It was thrilling for me. And so I just, you know, that's one of my most treasured memories of the Smithsonian. And another Thank example you. is when a fellows went to the conservation lab at the National Museum of African Art. And there was this huge, robe that may have been worn by a chief in Kenya, but it was in tatters, I mean, really in a bad shape. And we saw how it was being repaired, you know, wow. by textile experts, and how one day, you know, she had the, how much research went into the right colors, the right of doing it before it could be on display. And then another group saw the paintings of Whistler at the uh, Sackler, which is the Asian Art Museum, the ones that had never been on display. And for me also, just to have the curators take them out and you could go from any angle, and this was done specially for us. Another um, effort that we make in planning these uh, seminars is to take the groups to parts of the institution they may have never been. A lot of people in Washington don't realize that the National Zoo is part of the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. And very recently we've added, and also that it's a zoo that's leading in world zoology in doing sustainable design wow. uh, programs. We went to the Gustav High Center in New York, which is one part of the National Museum of the American Indian. And I guess a lot of people don't realize